Hi there, this is Mr Hall and this is a quick video on combustion of alkanes. It's particularly relevant for IB students, but if you're in grade 10 or year 11 in an upper course, then it'll be super few as well. Um, I'll go through how to balance the equations for complete combustion and also talk about incomplete combustion as well. The link to the IB course is for 10.2, which is called Functional Group Chemistry. And it's in the application skills section where you'll find the descriptor. And it says writing equations for the complete and incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons. And it's under the alkane part, so I'm just going to focus on alkane combustion today because that's basically where most combustion happens. Um, before I start talking about it, it's probably worth talking about where these actual uh, alkanes came from. So you've probably learned it before, but we started millions of years ago with dinosaurs and we had the forests and jungles they inhabited. They all died, um, and when they died, all that organic uh, material basically got reduced. And the reduction led to the fossil fuels that we've got nowadays, such as coal, oil and gas, and they've led to many uh, technological wonders and driven the Industrial Revolution, amongst other great things. So they've led to great things like camping stoves, so you can cook food while you're up on a mountain. It's led to traffic jams and being in somewhere like Manila and driving cars or being in cabs every day. It's a particularly pleasant thing to have as a modern thing. It's led to dodgy airlines taking you to great airports all around the world. It's led to power stations which are pumping out smog all over the world. And it's led to big cruise liners and boats taking us all around the world. So the next time you're in a car on a cruise liner, remember, it's all paid for by Denver the Last Dinosaur. So how do we balance these kind of equations? Well, in terms of combustion, there are two types of combustion you have to be aware of. They both uh, involve the same reactant, so you need a fuel and you need oxygen gas in the form of O2, because that's how it exists. The fuel in this case is a hydrocarbon, and we're focusing on alkane today. So if you have an alkane, it's either going to be complete or incomplete combustion. All right, We'll start with complete combustion first. Now, complete combustion happens in excess oxygen, as if you have loads and loads of oxygen around. Now, the products that you get are always water and carbon dioxide. So as an example, I've got a methane molecule over here and it's going to react with oxygen. Now these two are going to react together and boom! Now first of all in a reaction the bonds have to break, right? Something that you learn in Unit 5 um, when entropy and so forth. So they first off break, so they're flowing around for a while and then they have to kind of reform to create new molecules like so. All right, So they create oxygen, uh, no oxygen rather, they create water and they create carbon dioxide. Now for the sharp-eyed amongst you, you may notice there is a uh, an imbalance with the number of atoms. Can you see what they are? Hopefully you can. You'll notice on the left that there are four hydrogens, on the right there's only two. You'll notice on the left there's two oxygens, on the right there's only three. So one of the skills you have to be good at is balancing these kind of equations. There's a number of ways you can go about it. I'll teach a way which I think is absolutely foolproof. Um, but after kind of much deliberation, you'll notice that you need another water and another oxygen and the whole thing is now balanced. Now, when you're constructing and balancing these kind of equations, always try and follow what I call CHO, right? CHO. That is the path you take when you're balancing these equations. First off, you balance your carbons, then you balance your hydrogens, and then you balance your oxygens, and at the end, you give it a bit of a check. So, for example, if you do it for methane, which is the example we've just had. So now, I know when I'm constructing the equation, I start with CH4, which I'm just going to put here. Now, I know that because it's burning or combusting, it's got a reactive oxygen, so I'm just going to put O2 over here. Now that's going to form H2O plus CO2. And I know that because it's complete combustion. Those are always the products. Now I have to balance it. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my CHO. So I start with my carbons. I've got one carbon over here, and I've got one carbon over here, so that's fine. I don't have to mess around with that. Next one is hydrogens. I've got four hydrogens over here, and I've only got two over here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make that match that. So I need two more over here, so I'm going to add a two there. So that now gives me four. That's now balanced. To finish off, I'm going to do my oxygens. So I've got two oxygens over here. Over here, I've got two, and I've got one lot of two. So that's two plus two, which equals four oxygens. So I've got four there. To balance this out, I need more on this side, so I can play with that side a bit more. I'm going to put a two there. Two lots of O2 is four, and the whole thing is balanced. So it's CH4 plus 2O2 gives you two lots of H2O and CO2, and it kind of matches what we had here, which is very exciting. Now, other examples include pentane. Now, pentane is C5H12. One skill you might need to bring into this is remembering the uh, the names, uh, or the formula, rather, of uh, hydrocarbon-based in its name. It's a skill you do have to bring into the, 
into the assessment. So pentane is C5H12, and it's the same thing as before. I know I've got oxygen, because it's burning, or combusting rather, and I know I'm going to make water H2O, and I know I'm going to make CO2. So the question is balancing. Well, let's start with the carbons. I've got five over here, so C equals five. I've only got one over here, so that needs to get balanced. So to balance it, I'm just going to put a five there. So it's five lots one, five. So that's now five. Super. I now need to balance my hydrogens. I've got 12 over here, but only two here. Now, obviously, that's not good. I need to make that 12. A number times by two to make 12, I think, is six. So six lot two equals 12. I've now got enough. So the hydrogens are now balanced. Final one's the oxygens. I look over here, I've only got two. You'll always start with two. And over here I've got five lots of two, which is 10, plus one lot of six, which is six. So 10 plus six, I make out a 16. So I need 16 on this side, but I've only got two. So I need a number that can be multiplied by two to make 16, which I think is a number eight. Eight lots of two is 16, and it's now sorted. Now, if you have an odd number of carbons in your alkane, it's pretty straightforward in that fashion. When the number is even, it's a bit trickier. So let's do ethane, which is C2H6. So C2H6 plus O2. And it makes the same products, H2O plus CO2. Um, so let's do this again. So balancing our carbons. Uh, C equals 2. If I look on the right-hand side, I've only got 1. So I'm going to have to just write that down first of all. I'm going to put a 2 there. Two lots of one, and that is now two. If I look at my hydrogens now, I've got six hydrogens on this side. I've only got two on this side. So I need to find a number that multiplies by two to give six, which is three. So get rid of that. That's now six. And now I'm left with oxygen. Now oxygen, I've got two as usual on this side. And I've got two plus two times two, which equals four, plus three makes seven. So we need a number multiplying by 2, which gives you 7, and I think that's 3.5. Now, we have a problem here because we've got a decimal. You don't really want a decimal in your equations. The way to get around that is to get to this stage, and then you multiply the whole thing by 2. So if I multiply this by 2, that will mean I've got 2 lots of C2H6 plus 3.5 times 2, which equals 7 lots of O2. And that gives me 3 times 2, which is 6 lots of H2O. Add two lots of two, which is four lots of CO2. All right, so you just have to do the double up step at the end. And then we're good. Right, now, incomplete combustion is slightly different. I've written complete there, it's supposed to be incomplete. If it's incomplete, it should happen in limited oxygen. And the products include carbon monoxide and water. You sometimes get soot, uh, which is just pure carbon as well. The, the board of the IB is, is kind of unclear as to which one they're going to ask for. They'll probably give you the equation asking you to balance it, or they'll give you the product and expect you to construct the equation. In the example we're going to do here, I'm just going to assume that you make carbon monoxide and water. Um, this is quite a dangerous uh, reaction, actually, because the carbon monoxide that you release is a toxic gas, um, and it can lead to all sorts of problems if you've got uh, that as the primary uh, product of your burning. So let's do an example. Let's go, we've got ethane. So with ethane, we're going to do the same thing as we've done before, which is um, CHO. So I've got C2H6, um, and I'm reacting that with oxygen gas. But this time, instead of making carbon dioxide, I make carbon monoxide, so it's CO. And I still make water, which is H2O. Now let's follow CHO like we've done before. Um, I've got two carbons, and I've only got one over there. So to balance it, I need to put a two there, and now that works. Done. Now let's do hydrogen. Hydrogen, I've got six over here. I've only got two over here. To make that balance, I need to fix this. Two times something equals six. I think it's a three. And now that works. To finish off, I need to do oxygen. Oxygen equals two. Over this side, I've got two lots of one, which is two, and three lots of one, which I think is five. All right? So to make that work, I need to find a number multiplied by two, which gives me five, which I think is 2.5. Um, as you can see, we've got, again, a decimal, so we have to double up. So I'll write the doubled up equation here. So it should be two lots of C2H6 plus 5O2. And that gives me four lots of CO plus six lots of H2O. It might be nice um, at certain points just to double check your numbers to make sure you haven't made a mistake. So, for example, this side, I've got two lots of two carbons, which is four. I've got four over here, so my carbon is good. 
my hydrogen, I've got two lots of six, which is 12. Here I've got two lots of six, which is 12, so my hydrogen is also good. Oxygen-wise, five lots of two is 10. I've got four here and six here, which is also 10, so they're also good. It's really good to do that check every now and then. Let's do one more example. Um, feel free to kind of pause at this point, have a go, and let's see what we come up with. I'm going to have a go now, assuming that you've had an attempt at it. So I start off with C5H12, and I react that with oxygen, and it makes CO plus H2O. So let's get on with this. So I've got five carbons here. I've only got one here, so I need to multiply by five. So now my carbon no longer equals five, it now equals five. Hydrogen-wise, I've got 12 here. I've only got two here. Therefore, in order to make this balance, I need to find a number multiplied by 2 to give me 12, which I think is the number 6. Right. So now that works. And then to finish off the oxygens, so I've got two oxygens over here, and I've got 6 plus 5, which I think gives me 11 over here. So to balance this out, I need a number that multiplies by uh, 2 to give me 11, which I think is 5.5. Again, I've got to do the balancing like I've done before. Uh, so I need to double up, so two lots of C5H12 plus 11O2 gives me 10CO plus 12H2O. Again, I can double check the numbers just to make sure I haven't made a mistake. Two lots of 5 equals 10 carbon, 10 carbon over here, that works. Hydrogen, two lots of 12 is 24, two lots of 12 is 24, that works. And oxygen, I've got 11 lots of 2, which is 22. And I've got 10 plus 12 here, which is also 22. So that works as well. So it's balanced, and I'm happy with that. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, and uh, good luck with the rest of the balancing of your equations.